Okay, so the course objectives today are number one, to strategize and develop an action plan for expediating our post COVID income. Okay, and basically, what that means is that we're going to talk about what I'm going to suggest some ways to start planning uh, and strategizing over the next few weeks so that we can hit the ground running. Okay, because we're all uh, either associates, uh, team members practice managers, uh, practice principals, you know, a distance owners, whatever we might be, we're all just sitting at home. We're all worried about our future. I can tell you right now that I'm, I'm very worried. I've got a small business with my uh, business partner. And, uh, you know, this is this is going to hit us really, really hard. And we have only got so many months before we're bankrupt. And so we need to make sure we're doing everything we can right here and now to protect our investment and as a business owner we've got to protect what we're coming back to uh, in, a, in a few months uh, and as an associate it's exactly the same we've got to protect uh, our dentistry that we're going to bring back to our patients so that we can hit the ground running and we can start recuperating some income that we've lost over the over the, this this period of, of, of non-work okay um, we're going to develop a simplified sequence for anterior composite layering we make keep things simple uh, it means it's more reproducible um, and uh, you get more efficient at it. It becomes more cost effective for both ourselves and for our patients. Uh, so that's something we really need to work on. And we're going to learn how to uh, shape teeth and change our polishing sequence so that we're not getting too overwhelmed when it comes to tooth anatomy and getting a nice shine on teeth. Uh, so there is going to be quite a lot of composite in today's lecture, but there's also going to be lots of planning and strategizing as well. OK, so. What I'm going to teach you um, is a technique I've been doing for about five years, maybe, maybe a bit longer than five years, actually. And um, it can be used in all these situations you can see on the screen. So uh, class four fractures uh, like, the, like the picture, tooth surface loss on multiple teeth, uh, incisor ledge lengthening. Um, if we want to change the aesthetics of someone's smile or even a direct veneer, if someone's had a trauma and the tooth's gone dark. OK, so you can use it in many, many different situations. One technique is applicable to multiple situations. But the first thing I'm going to say is stop. OK, this is a webinar. This is a one hour uh, summary of composite treatment. So it's it's impossible. It's not very difficult. It's impossible for me to go through the entire protocol that's necessary to plan and assess every single case when they come through the door. OK. You can't just slap composite on teeth and expect it to be successful. Uh, you can't just put composite on the front surfaces of all the all the front teeth to uh, do a smile makeover and expect it to look good in, in five years time. You have to follow uh, what we were taught at university in postgraduate education from, uh, you know, occlusion courses and things like that. You need to follow a protocol and there are uh, protocols to follow. And they take a whole day to learn or two days or even even a full postgrad course. So use all your existing knowledge regarding teeth and regarding assessing a smile uh, before you start thinking about composite. OK, and these are just some of the kind of things that you do need to think about when a patient walks in and you see that fractured tooth like we see on the screen. The first thing you've got to think about, OK, is this a trauma? Have they fallen? Have they damaged this tooth? Um, if they have. Can you repair it? If you can, what other things do you need to do? Do you need to x-ray the tooth? Do you need to vitality test the tooth? OK, you need to do your due diligence because you, the last thing you want to be doing is putting some composite on a traumatized tooth without uh, doing x-rays, that kind of thing, and find out down the line that it's got an infection and you've and you've not been thorough at following it up. OK, uh, similarly, if it's a, an, an old trauma, an existing trauma, you want to make sure that you're doing all your uh, proper tests on the tooth to make sure it's still vital, to make sure it hasn't got, you know, internal or external resorption or something like that. OK, parafunction. Have they got a tooth that looks like this through parafunction? Are they grinding their teeth? Are they bruxing? Um, these are things that we need to diagnose first, because otherwise we put composite in teeth. And three months later, it's all broken off again. And it's very, very common for people to come and say, oh, you know, I have this front tooth that's chipped. And it keeps on getting repaired. It keeps on getting repaired. And every three or four months, uh, it falls off. So I don't want to see that dentist anymore, which is why I'm coming to see you. And it's got nothing to do with the quality of that single tooth composite the dentist did. It's because there were other things going on. There were some sort of slides. There were some sort of interferences, whatever it might be, that was causing that to chip. So we need to look a little bit deeper. OK, uh, age, age and diet. Very important. 
if somebody comes in and they've got two surface loss across most of the teeth and they're 75 years old, you, you would expect it. It's normal for their age. If they're only 22 years old, then you've got to start asking questions. Why are they uh, presenting like this? What's happened? How have they got into this situation? It's very, very important to ask these questions, okay? Orthodontics. Now, this could mean that their teeth are worn because they're misaligned and they have a crossbite and it's caused wear of the teeth. So you can't just build them up and expect it to last with an underlying orthodontical skeletal problem. But more often than not, it's actually post orthodontics that you see these patients and you can see that they've actually got wear of their teeth, differential wear, where perhaps the teeth were misaligned and they wore, and now the teeth are straight within the arch, yet things don't look quite straight. And that's a really lovely situation to be in because then you can do the nice, pleasing dentistry, which is make everything look straight. So you have to understand where they came from and, and where they are now and how they got into that situation, okay? And as I mentioned earlier, previous restoration failure, if this is a case that comes to see you and it's because the restoration keeps on failing, it's unlikely that it's just because the dentist previous to you didn't understand etching and bonding protocol. It's more likely there's something else going on, which is what's causing it to fail multiple times, okay? So before we go any further, just stop and just take a breath. Don't think about the composite for a moment and think about everything else. Take that one single tooth or those two or three or four teeth that you're looking at and then start to look further back and just go to the back of the mouth and see, is there anything else going on? Check the excursions, check the guidance, all those kind of things, the normal dentistry that we should all be doing, okay? So that's what I wanna say just before we move into anything further. And as I say, it's impossible for me to teach it on this webinar, but I just want that to be you know, at the forefront of your mind so that when you do go back to work, uh, you've all, you're always thinking about those things, okay? All right, so the reason we're talking about this is because if a case comes to you that looks like this, okay, this has got all of those factors going on. We've got failed restorations. We've got um, cervical erosion, probably from diet. We've got platal erosion. We've got differential wear from malocclusion. We've got missing teeth. We've got, uh, you know, slides. We've got bruxism. It's all happening in this mouth, okay? This is not the mouth that comes to see you in two months time when we just get back at work and you think, yes, this is what Tom was talking about. Easy composite, easy income. I'll slap some composite on and get the patient out the door and move on to the next one. This is a complicated treatment plan that's gonna involve a lot more, okay? So when you see something like this, this is not what we're talking about today, okay? This is a more advanced case that needs a lot more thought process. It needs, uh, composite it needs deprogramming it needs alignment and yes we can sort it out with composites but it's a, a nine month treatment plan okay so always think of these factors always ask how they got into the situation why they're presenting like they are okay very very important because today we're not dealing with full mouth rehabilitations we're talking about easy composite and easy income okay this is to try and help us get back on our feet and get the ball rolling once we get back to work, okay? We've got three months, potentially, where we're not gonna be working, we're not earning any income, yet we've still got bills coming out, you know, we've still got food to pay for, we've still got uh, mortgages, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so we need to come back stronger, better, more prepared and ready to go, okay? When we start back at work, whether it's June, whether it's July, you know, if you're watching in other countries, I don't know when that will be for everybody, but we can prepare for it, okay? Easy composite, easy income. So this is really the key slide for today, or these next two slides are the key slides, okay? We want to act today for tomorrow's peace of mind. And so basically that means, as I said earlier, we wanna strategize and develop an action plan right now that's gonna keep us going and keep us driven and keep us moving forward in preparation for when we go back to work, okay? We're gonna use a simplified sequence for anterior composite layering, which I'm gonna teach you today. And we're gonna learn a quick and effective way to shape teeth. So we're gonna come back with more clinical skills, but also with a, a perhaps a slightly different way of approaching our patients and approaching our treatment planning so that we can generate an income quickly and efficiently and start to get ourselves back on our feet again, okay? So we're gonna do that by maximizing our existing patients. Our patients, that are at our practice are the best source of income for us, okay? It's not all about the new consults 
and the new patient exams and the free consultations, it's about our existing patients. If we can utilize our existence patients, that is the best way for us to develop a quick income because they're there, they trust you, they're committed to the practice already. Now it's time to show them what we can do, okay? If we can improve our clinical efficiency, it's gonna do two things. It means that we can generate income nice and quickly using efficient and predictable results. Also, if we're more efficient, we can actually reduce our cost to our patients because we're doing things faster. If we can do things faster, we can bring the cost to the patients down, which means we can see more patients and we can build more of a referral base. Because every patient you do a good treatment on will tell three to five people, okay? So the more people you do good treatments on, the more your referral net network will grow and the more referrals you'll get into your practice, okay? So improving clinical efficiency is very important because it doesn't just mean that our profit margins go up, it means that we can actually lower our price to our patients because we're more efficient. And that means we have we can reach further afield and we can bring in more patients, okay? And the last thing is to generate new patients because yes, our own existing patients are the most important, but if we can uh, also do something to generate new patients, then that's a good thing, okay? So this is how we're going to start to act today for tomorrow's peace of mind, okay? So we're gonna strategize, first of all. We're going to maximize our existing patients, improve clinical efficiency, and generate new patients. And we're gonna do this with a couple of strategies I'm gonna to suggest to you, okay? Now, these are just suggestions, and obviously, take what you like from them uh, and, and leave the rest. Everybody's practice is different. Everybody's um, working environment is different. People have different types of patients uh, from different walks of life with different incomes, uh, different wants and different needs. So this is a kind of a generic suggestion. Uh, and then you take the little bits you like, okay? And hopefully there'll be a little bit in there for everybody, okay? So strategy number one is tooth whitening. Okay, tooth whitening for me is the best currency in dentistry because it costs us almost nothing to tooth whiten. And so rather than thinking about it as an incredibly profitable procedure, if we don't profit from tooth whitening, if we don't sell tooth whitening and use tooth whitening to make money, if we use it as something else, it actually becomes more versatile. And in my practice, we use tooth whitening as a currency. So we will um, put a very high value on tooth whitening. So we'll sell upper and lower tooth whitening for 400 pounds, okay? And it's advertised at 400 pounds in reception so that the patients can see that it's got a high value. And then if ever anything goes wrong, if we keep somebody running late, if we uh, have to cancel an appointment, um, you know, all those kind of things that potentially could cause problems, we can offer tooth whitening. And we can say, I'm really sorry about this, have some tooth whitening. And they think, blimey, I'm getting 400 quid's worth of tooth whitening, you know, because he ran 15 minutes late. So we use it like a currency, okay? And we also use it to help us uh, to um, convert our patients to treatment plans, to cosmetic treatment plans. Because if a patient is getting excited about a smile and you're whitening their teeth and they're starting to see the results of the whitening, their mindset starting to change and they're starting to focus more on cosmetic dentistry, the way things look, the appearance of their teeth. So it's getting them on the right mindset for cosmetic dentistry. OK, so I'll get into that in a little bit in, in a minute. All right. But there's another big benefit to tooth whitening. Uh, and that's to do with color of teeth, okay? So when you look at a tooth, um, you're not just looking at the shade guide that the Vita system has, you're actually breaking down the tooth into three separate parts, okay? So color as we know it is broken down into hue, chroma, and value, okay? So hue is what most people would say is color, okay? So it's the, it's the violets, the reds, the blues, the greens, the yellows, okay? So that's the hue of the tooth. Obviously, on the shade guide, you've got a different hue per number. So you've got the A hue, whoops, the A hue, the B hue, the D hue, um, and that's the different hues, okay? Then you've got the chroma, and the chroma is the saturation of the hue, okay? So that's the one, two, four on the shade guide. So you've got the hue, which is A, let's say, so that's kind of an orangey, yellowy hue, and then the saturation increases from A1 to A2 to A3 to A4, all right? 
And then lastly, you've got the value and the value is the lightness or darkness. Uh, and the best way of describing and explaining the value is that if you have an A1 zirconia crown and an A1 enamel composite crown, they're both A1, okay? So if you took a shade of that person using your Vita shade guide, you'd say A1. The zirconia material is much more opacious, blocks the light, hits the light is blocked by the uh, opacious material and it's reflected back at you, okay? So it has a, a higher value, a whiter, a chalkier appearance, okay? So it has a higher value, more white. Whereas the composite crown, much more translucent, still an A1, okay? But it's much more translucent, so more light will go through it and therefore not as much is reflected back at you, so it has a darker appearance, it has a lower value. So the same shade, A1, can have a completely different value depending on the material, okay? And this is the same with teeth. Um, an A1 in one person's tooth is not the same as an A1 in another person's tooth because the teeth have got different thicknesses, they've got a different dentine, the, the age of the tooth affects the way that the dentine structure is. Um, younger teeth have um, less uh, mineral content and more moisture, older teeth have more mineral content, less moisture, and those things will all affect the way that the tooth presents, okay? And it does make our life as dentists very, very complicated. Um, and it also makes it very expensive because if you have to deal with every shade of tooth in the entire population, then you need the master poverty kit that's got absolutely everything in it that costs you an arm and a leg. And the problem is, is that every six months you go through it and 50% of the shades have gone out of date because you haven't used them, especially the ones like the B4s and the A4s, those kind of things. You use them so infrequently that they go out of date and you end up with 15 compules of composite, they're out of date. So it's actually not cost effective to have such a massive shade selection. So by tooth whitening, what you're doing is you're bringing everybody down to that lower end of the of the of the um, shade spectrum. So you're getting everybody to a BL4, a B1, or an A1. Okay. So it doesn't really matter whether they come in as an A4 or as they come in as an A2. If the first thing you do is tooth whitening, then everybody becomes a BL4, an A1, or a B1. And that makes our life so much easier because if everybody's the same color, then you can become very skilled and very efficient at using composites in those colors. And you haven't got to think about all the different color combinations and whether you should layer a little bit of dark enamel first and then a bit of dentine and then this and then that to try and get an overall D4 shade. Don't even worry about it, whiten them first. It costs hardly anything to whiten. So just whiten them, get them to a B1 or A1 and suddenly life becomes so much easier. So to get better, more efficient at composite, take the color away and get everybody to the same color. And then all you're doing is the same technique with the same colors of composites over and over and over again, and you get more and more and more efficient, okay? And your results get more and more and more predictable. The hardest thing is to color match a single tooth when you haven't done any tooth whitening, because you have absolutely no idea what your recipe of your color is gonna be. And although there's techniques to try and uh, plan your recipe, chances are you're not gonna get it right first time or even second time, and you have to keep on drilling in and, and adding little bits and taking bits away. Whereas if you've whitened that patient first, then you've brought them to the same color as you're, as you're used to, and you're just repeating that same process over and over again. And so that's how I use tooth whitening to make my life easier, okay? So I don't think of tooth whitening as a, as a profitable procedure. I think of it almost as a necessary procedure to take the patients and make them fit in with my protocol, which makes my life a lot easier, okay? And you might have seen the slide because I went on one too far, but in Essex, this is this is what I'm dealing with, okay? This is toilet bowl white, which is what everybody wants. Um, so that is really quite hard to get to with tooth whitening, but it does make everybody's life easier if you can move everybody to that end of the spectrum, okay? So the BL4s, the A1s, and the B1s. And uh, this is how I do it. This is by far my most favored way of tooth whitening. So it's home tooth whitening with uh, close fitting trays. You don't need to have the welds in the trays. Uh, close fitting trays is absolutely fine. Um, scalloped around the gum margin, okay, to create a little seal. It's really important that either yourself or your dental assistant takes time 
teaching the patient how to apply the gel and how to wear the trays okay if you want to get the best whitening they really really need to be educated okay so this is where you can bring your team members in and you can you can show the team members how to do it and you can allow them to educate your patients because that time is well worth it because it means they'll get a very good result um, I always start the patients with 10 days of 10% carbon microoxide worn overnight okay it's very, very low percentage, and it really doesn't create a lot of sensitivity at all. Uh, it gets the teeth used to the whitening effect, uh, and you can sort of wean out the patients that are gonna struggle. Because if they start to struggle with the 10%, and you say to them, don't move on to the 16%. If you're finding the 10% a little bit too much, or, or, you're, or you're just about managing with it, just call the practice up, and we'll send you out some more 10% through the post, Bring your 16% back in with you when you come, okay? Start them on 10%, let them get used to it, and after 10 days, move them on to the 16%, okay? If they find the 16% creates too much sensitivity, just drop them back to the 10%, and it's a nice, gentle way of easing them into it, okay? You can achieve really nice whitening with just 10% on its own, but it does just take that a little bit longer. So I quite like to try and up them to the 16% if possible, but it's not it's not a big deal if they can't manage it and we just go back to the 10 percent and we just do it for a little bit longer okay so we do 10 days 10 percent 10 days 16 percent that's you know one day shy of three weeks and that will give you a really really lovely gentle and long-lasting whitening effect okay so this is what we do for pretty much all patients now the cost of tooth whitening if you buy it from a company um, such as SmartFast is 50 pounds, upper and lower trays and, and the whitening gels. If you do it yourself, uh, it's a little bit of an investment because you have to buy the suck down machine, um, which is about 150 pounds. And then you have to buy the blanks um, for the material, which is 1.5 millimeter uh, sort of rubberized material. You can create your own um, suck down. So you cast your models up yourself with stone, um, you scan it around the margins, you create your suck downs, you trim them, you give them a polish, and then you can bulk buy the gel. And if you do that, it actually works at about 30 pounds a patient, okay? So after the initial investment of buying the suck down machine, it then works at about 30 pounds a patient. So you can do tooth whitening very, very cheap indeed, okay? And that's that's what we do. Um, you know, if we've got time, we'll do it ourselves. If we're running out of time, we'll send it off uh, to SmartFast or another company to get our, our tooth whitening, but it can be very cheap, okay? So that's the tooth whitening technique. Um, now, we're not just giving tooth whitening willy-nilly, all right? We're gonna use this free tooth whitening to help generate some patient enthusiasm and help bring some patients to the practice, okay? So we can do this by offering it as a freebie with any tooth straightening procedures. So. We all know that uh, if you're doing short-term orthodontics, roughly 3,000 to 3,500 pounds for upper and lower um, teeth, something like that. You know, it's a lovely big chunk of income uh, and it's really fairly easy to do once, once you're well experienced in it uh, and there's a big market for it. So if you can uh, be ahead of your competitors by marketing that you're giving free tooth whitening for every straight teeth consult, then that's a way of bringing patients in. Um, any smile makeover again whether you're using ceramics or composite it's lovely for the patient to start uh, whitening their teeth first so they're already getting results before you've even done anything but also it's uh, it just makes our lives a lot easier because if you get everybody to a nice white shade it makes color matching so much easier for everybody for the ceramist as well um, composite bonding is a massive thing at the moment everybody wants uh, composite smiles because it's more cost effective uh, it's more widely available i suppose um and uh and most dentists can do it um so why not offer free tooth whitening with composite bonding patients are coming in asking for composite bonding so market that you're doing free tooth whitening it's what might make them choose you over somebody else and this is what we want to do we want to bring the patients to our practice so that when we go to uh, work in two months time we've got a nice full patient list of these new patients coming in wanting these high um profit procedures okay and then finally, um, you know, you have to work this out for your own practice and you'd have to talk to your principals if you're if you're not a principal and you're an associate. But potentially with any new patient examination, um, they get free tooth whitening if they need treatment over a certain value. So they come in and they need two crowns um, and um, a scale and polish and something else. 
if he comes over 1500 pounds, you give him free tooth whining. Again, it's an offer that will bring them to your practice as opposed to anybody else's. And this is what we have to think about. At the moment, we're sitting at home twiddling our thumbs. So many other people are also sitting at home twiddling their thumbs and they're looking on the internet, okay? They're looking through the newspaper and they're seeing what's going on out there. And if they start to see uh, marketing from yourselves saying, we're offering free tooth whitening, you know, give yourself a nice smile once this scenario is over, or however you want to word it, then that's gonna be sitting in the back of their mind. And by the time they decide that they do wanna to come to see the dentist, they've got you at the forefront of their mind, okay? They might have their own dentist already, but if their own dentist isn't doing any of this stuff and you are, that is what could bring them to your practice, okay? So it's important to uh, to always be thinking about other people, not just what we're doing, but what everybody else is doing, okay? And that's where visibility is very important. Um, there's no point doing these offers and doing these things if we're not visible to our patients or our potential patients. So in these next few months, we could be making posters, okay? So make some posters, practice logo, uh, talk to your principals, find out if they're on board with this, get some posters printed, ready to go, so that when we start back at work, we can put the posters in the waiting room, our patients will come in and they'll see these new offers that we're, that we're doing, okay? Flyers, flyers are incredible, especially at the moment. Everybody is stuck at home, okay? Well, they should be stuck at home, self-isolating. So literally the most exciting thing in the day is when the post comes, because what else is going on? Other than watching Tiger King, uh, on Netflix, there's literally nothing else to do. So when that post comes, people rush to the front door and they open it because they want to see what's going on and it is something to do. So why not Why not get some flyers made up, okay? Deliver them on a postcode around your area. Uh, you can even get a call tracking number on the flyers so you can find out what actually your conversion rate is from the flyers to phone calls coming into the practice. And again, just free tooth whining, you know, post COVID free tooth whining, you know, give yourself a smile for the summer, whatever it might be, but make sure that you're tracking it and make sure that you're you're um, getting it out there. Because if you don't get it out there, no one's gonna know about these things. Existing patients, you can email, you can let them know about your opening times, you can let them know about um, the emergency procedures that are happening, you can keep them updated about the practice and uh, what's happening with the COVID uh, scenario and how that's affecting their dentistry and you can sneak in a little bit of advertising as well, okay? Very careful with the wording, but there's no reason you can't say, once we get back up and running, we will be offering free tooth whitening to all our existing patients or something like that, okay? Newsletters, uh, newsletters are fantastic. If you've got um, consent from, from your existing patients to email them, you can email them newsletters and you can let them know what the team's been doing, uh, how, a lockdown has been affecting everybody, what people have been doing to keep themselves entertained, healthy, educated, uh, put some diet advice, some workout advice on these on the newsletters, and then you put a couple of information uh, leaflets about um, your offers, okay? So there's lots and lots of ways you can communicate with your patients. And right now, rather than, you know, thinking, okay, well, I've, I should go and paint that fence again outside, no, we've done that. We spent a couple of weeks doing that. Now let's sit down in front of our computer and start to think about what we can do to communicate to our patients. Because if we really take time in communicating and telling our patients what we're up to, what the team's up to, and how we're helping each other and how we're going to help them, that will pay dividends in two months or three months' time when we come back to work, okay? It really will. The patients will really appreciate that communication. And the whole time you've been subtly sneaking in little offers, okay? Social media is massive, obviously, everybody knows that. Um, you know, if you, wanna, if you wanna do well with your marketing, you need to dominate social media. Um, and so, you know, now's the time to start putting some pictures onto our Facebook, uh, works Facebook, our, our own personal Facebook, just letting people know what we're up to. It doesn't have to be the hard sell, but you wanna start making your visibility uh, apparent again, because a lot of people have kind of, you know, too right they have as well. They've dropped back out of respect for the for the situation. Uh, and, you know, I completely appreciate that. And, you know, I also feel the same. But at the same time, we don't want to drop off the radar completely because we have got a career that we need to come back to. And we have a lot of people who are home and furloughed, 
they'll just be going back to work when they're told to and everything will, will go back to the same. But for us, it's going to be very different. It's going to be a completely different way of working uh, and a completely different climate that we come back to. So we do need some visibility at the moment. We need to let our patients know we are still around and we are still thinking of them and we're still there for them. OK. And then lastly on this list, and this is really the key uh, to maximising what we can do at this time is to involve the team. OK they are also sitting at home they're bored um, they will be more than happy to help out and if you throw some ideas at them and there might be some um, some practice managers watching today um, you know throw some ideas at the team find out what the team thinks um, come up with ideas where you can do a charity drive uh, something to um, generate awareness for a cause that's close to your heart it doesn't even have to be the current situation but use the team to start to develop some ideas to put into place over the next few weeks and the coming months to help develop your practice and, and grow and strengthen your team together so the more you involve the team the, the better I, I really do feel that okay so that was strategy number one which is tooth whitening okay so it's using tooth whitening to number one help get patients into the practice to convert patients to the cosmetic treatment plans to get patients starting to think about smile makeovers by possibly offering tooth whitening as kind of like a, a starter to get them thinking about an improvement of the smile and also to use as a currency you know when you've had to cancel appointments um when we don't know what, how we're going to have to work we don't know whether we're going to have to have half an hour between patients to allow aerosol to settle and you know potentially things can overrun so if you're already using tooth whitening in your practice and everybody's already tooth whitening you can use it as a freebie to help smooth over things when they go wrong okay uh, and then also, and, and again, this is where I think tooth whitening really works. It resets everybody's teeth. It gets everybody down the same shade side of the spectrum and everybody can then have these nice white teeth and it just makes our life so much easier because we're only working with a couple of shades. Uh, and so we can become a lot more predictable with our results. OK, so that's tooth whitening. Right. Strategy number two. Is the mock up. Again, we're talking about our existing patients at the moment, okay? This is where we can really show them what we can do with the mock-up. It is incredibly powerful, all right? If they have microdontic laterals, slightly inset laterals, for example, you can get a little bit of composite and with your thumbs, you can just squidge it over those two lateral teeth and gently shape it and cure it. Sit them up and show them in a the mirror and it is an instant improvement and you can see the amazing effect it has as soon as they see themselves they go oh wow wow blimey wow wow what have you done and you can literally say all i did was stick some composite on your two lateral teeth and look look how amazing it looks it's really really common for people um in the uk especially to have microdontic lateral teeth and a little bit of composite on it just just really enhances that smile creates nicer symmetry um creates more of this i suppose the the hollywood smile by just lengthening the laterals a little bit um it really is quite powerful uh, and you'll be amazed at how many people who never even thought about smile improvements will suddenly get on board once they see their smile with the lateral teeth just widened and lengthened a little bit. Um, and you can do that so simply for the sake of a couple of quids worth of composite to, to put on the teeth, it could convert into a 500 or 600 pound you know, treatment plan. Um, so it's very, very easy, easy way of generating a bit of fast income. Um, if it's multiple teeth, if it's multiple teeth and you want to do a sort of a, a more extensive smile improvement, it will be better to get a, a form of wax up and a trial smile made. Um, now, a traditional uh, lab made wax up can be quite expensive. Um, even the digital ones can be quite expensive, about £30 a tooth. And then you obviously pay for the, the putty over the top. Um, Smilefast uh, do it for £99, which is six teeth and the putty over the top. So for, for this situation, I wouldn't be doing it free across the board. But what I would do is I would judge the patient and I would see if they're on the fence. And if you think, well, this could go either way, then I would take the gamble and do the investment. Because for that £99, you could potentially be converting a, a £3,000 treatment plan. So it's well worth it, in my opinion. Uh, but don't just be doing when everybody comes through the door. I'll do a free, free trial smile on everybody. Have that conversation about tooth whitening. Uh, see if they're interested. Once you start talking to them about, you know, have you ever thought about improving your smile or, 
you know, so do you find yourself not smiling as fully as you, you want to in photographs? Just get them thinking about that emotional connection with their smile. And if you can start to feel that they're, they're on the fence about smile improvements, that's when you offer them the free smile trial, okay? Show them what their smile will look like by doing a trial smile. And for those of you who don't know, basically, a trial smile is you take an impression of the patient's existing dentition and you have a laboratory digitally or by hand wax up the perfect smile on, say, the front six teeth. Um, we then take a putty impression of those front six teeth and send it back to, to you. When the patient next come in, you take some temporary crown bridge material, something like Luxatemp or ProTemp or something like that, and you fill it inside the, the putty, place it over the patient's teeth, hold it for a couple of minutes to let it set, and then you take the putty away. And what that does is it transfers the perfect uh, smile from the model onto the patient's teeth. And they actually get to see a real life example of, of exactly what they're seeing in the model, what they would look like, okay? This is where it's so important to uh, document it. Photograph it and video it, okay? Because you can then compare the before photos and the after photos and you can also show them the video of themselves when they're smiling and they're looking at themselves and all the emotions and the expressions in their eyes and, and the way that they're communicating. And it's really, really powerful. Don't just pop it on, let them have a look in the mirror and they go, oh, yeah, that's really good, oh, brilliant. And then you go, brilliant, and you pop it all off again. You need to use it, okay? Use it as a tool to allow them to take it home, show their husband, show their wife, show their, their mom and dad, whoever it might be, uh, and really consider it and think about it. And then you bring them back as a recall visit for them to come back and uh, and have a chat about it with them, okay? The more points of contact you have, the better. So if somebody's on the fence about a smile improvement, a trial smile can be very, very powerful. And that's why I put in point three, photograph video and send a presentation, okay? You know, six months ago, when we were all rolling along very nicely, everybody was doing fine or, or most people were, um, the economy was good, you know, books were busy. We weren't needing to go above and beyond because we were getting our patients coming in. The marketing was working. Everybody was ticking along quite nicely. Times have changed. Things are going to be different. So we may need to go above and beyond and do that a little bit more. So when we have these patients coming in and we're taking these photographs and we're doing these videos to show them, let's put in a presentation. Let's do a quick PowerPoint presentation that shows their before pictures, their after pictures, put some slides in about straightening, about stomach veneers, about composite, okay? And then film yourself talking to the camera like I'm doing to you guys now throughout the power presentation, and then you can send it to them via email, okay? It's a very, very personal way of giving them a summary of the things you discussed. They get to see all the different options available to them. They get a little bit more information to help with the consent process. They also get to see the befores and afters, uh, and the whole time you're talking to them directly using uh, either the video function on PowerPoint or there's a, an app called um, Loom, L-O-O-M, that you can download. And that will just re basically record your screen and films you at the same time and it creates a little video and you can then send a link to the patient and they can click on the link and it takes it to the Loom app where they can watch the video, okay? So you don't even have to actually download the video and send it. You can just send them the link for the video. Um, it's things like that that are going to make a big difference and we can be doing that right now. So we can be offering virtual consultations and we can be answering the emails that are coming into the practice by contacting the patients and saying, do you know what, send me some pictures of your teeth, send me a short video of yourself and I'll get back to you with a more in-depth um, presentation to show you the options that might be available for you spend that time now building that rapport up with our patients and our potential patients so that when we go back to work in a few months time uh, we've got a book full of people who have already had a consultation they already feel like they've got to know you a little bit and they've already made a decision on where they want to go okay so you can literally come back to work and hit the ground running and just just get on with things okay um, and then the last thing is again engage the team use your team if you're not using your team to help you with this process that you know really it's a, it's a way we can become a lot more uh, efficient uh, having the team members to call these patients um three days later find out how they got on about their consultation what were their thoughts what were their concerns do they need to talk about anything now and then again a week later okay the idea is points of contact the more times we have these points of contact the more we get to know our patients the more trust they have in us 
and um, the more chance that they will convert to bigger treatment plans. And that's what it's all about at the end of the day. We've got three months worth of money we're going to need to make up. Uh, a lot of people are going to be close to bankruptcy when this is all over. So we need to go above and beyond. OK, and we're not talking about slapping composite on all teeth to get a quick buck. We're talking about doing good dentistry, but we're doing it more efficiently. And we're using our time now to help educate and generate new patients uh, ready to go for when we go back to work. OK, this is a situation I just want to show you this one because this guy uh, saw me, has been, had been seeing me for four years, three years, I think. And um, he, just a, a regular, regular guy. And every, every year or every six months, I'd say to him, you know, I can do something with these teeth. I can, I can improve them. He had two veneers on his two central teeth um, and obviously a little bit of wear, uh, a bit of spacing. I said, I can do something with these teeth. You know, you, can I straighten them? No, no, no. Okay, okay. Maybe we can veneer them. No, no, no. I'm not, not interested. Not bothered. You know, it's just my, I'm, I'm, you know, 60 years old. I'm not bothered about my smile. It's the same excuses that you hear all the time. Um, and for four years, I just carried on talking to him and explaining things verbally got nowhere and then on the fourth year I decided well why don't I just try a mock-up and I'll just get a bit of composite and I'll put a bit of composite on his lateral teeth and I'll just lengthen his central teeth a little bit just to show him what it might look like and it was one of the first times I actually really tried a mock-up um, I'd always just talked to my patients and shown them pictures but this was the real turning point for me because this is when I started actually doing live mock-ups on my patients and using it as a tool to kind of educate them because different people respond to different things. Some people are very um, visual and they like pictures. They like to see processes and some people are more emotional and they need to have it in their own mouth to connect with it emotionally. And that's where the mock-up comes in. So that's exactly what I did. And this is what this picture is. It's just a bit of composite slapped onto his lateral teeth and a little bit on his two central teeth just to show what could be achieved. And the reason he's got alginate on his teeth is because literally there and then he said, oh, my goodness, I love it. I wasn't expecting that. That looks amazing. Oh, my wife's going to love it. And it, it was unbelievable how quickly he ch he turned. Um, and so I took impressions and I used it as a, as a working model just to help me with my sort of planning and designing process. And we moved forward from there. Uh, took less than five minutes yet converted a really nice treatment plan that was very, very easy to do. And other than replacing those two central teeth, it was completely additive because a cool thing about the mock-up is you can actually flick off those those um, composite veneers you just placed onto the lateral teeth and measure the thickness of them. And in this situation, I had 0.6 of a mil. And so I knew that I had enough thickness for additive only um, feldspathic veneers. So I didn't need to do any prep of the lateral teeth. So this case was a really lovely tech case because I was able to do um, completely additive dentistry, build up his lower four to four, rebuild the wear, um, rebuild his upper three to three, uh, dial him in and change the um, ceramic veneers on the two central teeth and replace them with new feldspathic ones and feldspathic no prep veneers on the lateral teeth. So we took him from there to there. So really, really, and this I think was at the two year recall, um, really, really easy, simple dentistry, like didn't require any major skill involved from me. I whitened his teeth, so it was all just became one color, which I believe was A1. It just, it was just really, really easy. It was high profit, low stress, um, low complexity. Um, and that's the kind of dentistry we want to be doing. And it was just a particular case that was so powerful because that mock-up just changed his mind like that, okay? So that's the second strategy. So we're gonna start doing mock-ups on our patients. So the patients that come in, you think you can improve their smile, you have to show them. Don't just tell them, don't just explain it, don't show them a video, do it on their teeth. If we can show them physically in their mouth what it looks like, the conversion rate uh, will be a massive, hugely different, okay? So that's strategy number two. Strategy number three, simplify. And it's finally we get to composite, okay? Which is why you've all attended. So this is where we're gonna introduce a simplified technique to do composite, okay? If we simplify things, life is a lot easier for everybody. So strategy number three is simplify. And we're gonna do that by following on from what I said earlier with the tooth whining. 
if everybody whitens their teeth, we only need to use four shades of composite, and that's it. So we can bin all that other composite. So all that composite that goes out of date, all those dark shades, all those dentine shades that just sit there and never get used, they can all be binned, okay? Which means that in times of financial strain, we can uh, reduce our monthly outgoings by reducing the composite we're having to order because we're only using a small selection, okay? And I truthfully only use A1 composite for all my posterior teeth. And then the composite I use on the anterior teeth, I'm going to show you in a minute, okay? But I, we, I don't use any other shades because I don't need to because everybody gets tooth whitening, okay? So 30 quid whitens everybody's teeth and then it gets them thinking about smile makeovers and we start replacing amalgams, we start doing anterior composite work and they all leave with lovely, healthy, beautiful looking smiles, um, but we've reduced our outgoings by reducing the amount of composite we need to buy. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to use only four shades of composite. And I'm also going to simplify the way we actually place the composite on the teeth by analysing the teeth as four separate and individual areas. It doesn't matter what situation comes in. All you're looking at is these four areas of the teeth. Okay, and if you've got four areas, you just work out where are the area, which area is deficient in. And that's the area you've got to build up. Is it all four of those areas? Is it just three of them? Is it two of them? Or is it one of them? Okay. We're only going to worry about enamel. This is called easy composite, easy income. All right. So we're not going to be talking about massive class four fractures that have gone into dentine where we've got complex nine layer Newton file techniques. OK, we're going to be talking about simple, simple composite addition to improve somebody's smile enamel only. If we're only working with enamel, we've not got to worry about dentine. We've got not got to worry about the opacious dentine material and the layering thickness. And if we make one too thick, one too thin, it changes the overall shade of the teeth. We're not worrying about that. We're putting that to the side because we're only talking about simple anterior composite enamel only. OK, we're going to focus on line angles as well. Only focus on line angles. It's very easy to get overwhelmed with shaping and polishing techniques, okay? And we do go into real depth in teaching this on the SmartFast course, but for the purposes of today's webinar and thinking about generating some income uh, once we get back to work and uh, getting things done a little bit more efficiently, uh, then why worry about getting everything anatomically absolutely perfect you know, under macro photography, let's just worry about line angles. Because if you can get the line angles right and you can get just the overall shape of the tooth right, it looks beautiful. And you can always come back to add in secondary and tertiary anatomy at a later date, okay? But if we can just focus on getting the, the shape and the line angles right, that is what is gonna make the smile really stand out and it's gonna look beautiful. And then once you've got that skill sorted, you can then start to develop further and learn um, secondary and tertiary anatomy. But for the time being, let's just kind of shelve that and just focus on line angles, okay? And we're gonna condense the polishing sequence. Again, it, it, it can get a bit overwhelming. There's so many different polishing sequences out there. Um, different materials need different sequences, you know, goat's hair brushes, pastes, this, that, and the other. Let's just condense it down to a couple of verse and we can just do everything with the same couple of verse. And we know we're gonna get a nice high luster using four shades of composites in four areas with some nice line angles and a couple of bursts to polish. Efficient, predictable, cost-effective, and that's what we're after at the moment, okay? So four shades, four areas, and this is what we're gonna talk about. These are the areas, okay? These are the only areas we wanna think about. The main body of the tooth, the opalescent proximals of the tooth, which are the sides of the tooth, okay? The translucent incisal part of the tooth at the top, plus or minus a halo, and then the facial surface, so the front enamel on the tooth. So think of it a bit like a box, okay? So you've got the sides of the box, which are your opalescent proximals, you've got the top of the box, which is your translucent incisal, and then you're going to fill the box with a body shade, and then you're going to put a lid on the box with a facial surface final layer, okay? That's it. We just need to think about those four areas makes life a lot simpler. Now, every different um, brand has different composites. So I'm just gonna go through the four main brands and show you the composites that I would suggest uh, if you're gonna use this four shade, four area technique, okay? So for Colza, um, 
a massive fan of Colza Venus Pearl. Uh, for the body shade, the main body is A1, okay? Always A1. Even if the tooth's a BL4, a B1, or an A1 after tooth whitening, we're just going to use an A1, always for the body shade, okay? Um, for the proximals, we're going to use clear opal or clear opalescent. Um, for the incisal translucency, we're going to use clear. And then for the final facial layer, the enamel layer, this is where we're going to use a microfilled composite called Durafil VS from Colza. Okay, so the Venus Pearl is a nano hybrid, and the um, the enamel layer that we're going to place is a microfilled uh, because we can get a much higher shine uh, and, and a really really nice luster from it. Okay, and this is where you need to choose the shade that's appropriate to the patient. So if they're a BL, you want a BL shade for an A1. A1 shade, if they're a B1, they want a B1 shade, okay? So that's the only one that changes depending on the overall uh, color you're trying to match for that patient, okay? So that's the um, the recipe for cold up. Uh, this is 3M, so if you're a 3M guy or gal, then we're gonna use an A1 body shade for the body. We're gonna use white enamel for the proximals, uh, clear translucent for the incisal, and then again, for an enamel shade, A1 or B1, for the facial surface, okay? GC, I love GC, I love GC. Um, I'm a big Essentia fan. So for the body shade, we're gonna use Genial A1. For the proximals, Junior Enamel, okay? Uh, and then for the incisal, Opalescent Modifier from Essentia, and the facial is Light Enamel from Essentia which is about an A1, maybe slightly lighter than an A1, but it's got a lovely chameleon effect, the uh, the light enamel, so it, it works really well. So that's your, that's your recipe for GC, for the four shade technique. And then finally, Empress uh, from Ivacar Vivident. So Empress Direct, uh, which is what we use for SmileFast, which works really, really well uh, in the single shade technique, uh, but also works very well for multiple shade layers. And so this is the recipe for the four shade technique. A1 body, um, BLXL for the proximals, um, so slightly more, slightly whiter, slightly higher value, a bit more opalescent. Um, trans opal for the incisal, the translucency, and then for the final facial layer, usually BLL, and that's that's bleach light that shade. But again, that's that's a bit like the GC uh, one. It's 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 got quite a good chameleon effect, so it absorbs the colour of the underlying tooth, and, and it always looks really nice. So that's the recipe for your Ivoclar, okay? Four shades, four areas. They were the shades. These are the areas again. Main body, opalescent proximal, translucent incisal, and facial surface. Now, this is a mix that I've been using for a long time, okay? So this is using a combination of Venus Pearl and GC Essentia, okay? And the reason that I have developed this mix for myself is because I like the handling characteristics of Pearl. Um, I find it very good at creating a box, okay? It's not too soft, it's not crumbly, it doesn't slump, it goes where I want it to go, you can pack it nicely, and it just, it's just, for me, and it is completely individual, I really like this, uh, the Pearl. But I do find that I don't get the best luster with it. Now that's not to say you can't get a good luster with it, you can, but it does take a complicated, I suppose, uh, polishing sequence. What I have found is using an, an alternative brand for the facial surface, such as the GC Essentia LE or the um, Ivoclar Vivident Empress Direct BLL, you can get a very, very high luster with a simplified polishing technique. And as we're all about efficiency at the moment, that's what we're going for, okay? So we're gonna try and reduce the number of burrs that were necessary, reduce the, the polishing sequence necessary to get that high luster effect at the end, okay? And so this is this is a lovely little combination. So if you already got um, you know Venus in your practice, then all you need to purchase is the GC Essentia LE and you can copy this technique. But if you haven't got the uh, Venus, and you're already a 3M user or an Ivoclar user, you know, you can re refer to those previous uh, four slides to find the recipe, okay? So, in this situation, we're going to be building up the lateral teeth, okay? So she's got quite narrow, a little shorter, a uh, little rounded lateral teeth, and she just wanted a bit of a fuller smile, and by widening the lateral teeth and just straightening them up a little bit, we can create 
just a little bit more of a full smile and nice symmetry, which um, this young girl wanted. So there's the four shades on there. Uh, you can see the A1 um, is placed sort of towards the cervical area because that's the body part of the tooth. Uh, the CO, um, which is the clear opalescent, is towards the proximal. The CL is towards the incisal. And then on the central tooth, which is the, the tooth that I kind of want to replicate, I've got the LE, okay? Now, if we, this is taken with normal flash photography, but if we have a look at it with a, a cross-polarized filter, you can see now uh, all the flash marks have been removed. Look at the A1 and sort of drag that color across to the cervical part of the central tooth, and you can see it's a really, really good color match. Look at the, the CO uh, and put it to the proximal of the central tooth. And again, you can see it's a, it's a very, very close color match. And then you've got a slightly uh, more translucent in, in size and area. So you can see it looks slightly grayer. So that's what we say the value is slightly reduced in the incisal area and the CL blends in really well there. Okay. So we're going to use the A1 on the body part and then for the incisal halo, okay? We're gonna do a fake incisal halo by taking a tiny bit of A1 and just dropping it on the incisal edge. Certain composites don't need fake incisal halos because they have true opalescence, um, but not all of them do. So the opalescent modifier and the Essentia range is a true opalescent uh, composite. So that will actually create its own halo effect as it would in natural tooth um trans opal from empress direct as well is a is a proper opalescent composite so again you can create a natural halo uh using the right composite materials but some composites don't have those properties so you have to create a false incisal halo so this is where you just take a, a little bit of a more opacious body shade material and you roll it very very fine into a tiny tiny thin sausage and you just lay it along the incisor ledge uh, as part of your build up and that's what creates the halo effect, okay? So in this instance, we're gonna use A1 for the body, and we're gonna use a bit of A1 just to drop on the incisor ledge as well, okay? CL, so the clear, the incisal translucency, we're just gonna use on the incisor ledge. And then the CO, which is the proximal parts, we're gonna use down the sides, okay? So there's the three shades and the three areas, and then over the top of the whole thing, we're gonna use the GC Essentia LE for a final enamel layer over the top, okay? So let's go through a case. So this is that same case. And this is one of those cases I was saying about, it's an existing patient, it's a post-orthodontic case. So this uh, girl had orthodontics when she was a lot younger um, and she's now, at the right time in her life, she wants a smile improvement. So they're all the teeth are already straight, okay? And probably we can make them a little bit straighter with a bit more ortho, but it's not what she wants. She just wants her smile looking a little bit better. So what did we do? We did our tooth whining, and then we did our mock-up to show her what it would look like if we lengthened and widened her laterals a little bit. And that's what she decided to go for, okay? So obviously she always, in, in every patient, they always see the hygienist as part of every every cosmetic dentistry um, procedure, uh, sorry, plan. we won't be doing any of these procedures unless the oral health is good. All the photos you see are the first photos, that's literally the day they come in to see me, not uh, once they've seen the hygienist, okay? So that always is, is part, because don't forget, all our hygienists, most of them are self-employed as well, you know, they've not been getting any income as well, so we've got to get our hygiene books filled. So for all these patients that are signing up to these nice cosmetic treatment plans, we also want to make sure we are 100% pushing them into the hygiene and say to them, you know, you're not, you're not even gonna be having tooth whining until you've got your teeth cleaned because we need to fill our hygiene books as well. We need to make sure that we're generating an income stream for our hygienists as well as, as for ourselves, okay? So isolation, um, rubber dam, uh, floss tied these teeth. And then to clean the teeth, I uh, sandblast them uh, first of all. So I use a metal matrix strip and I just weave it between the teeth to protect the neighboring teeth. And then I blast the teeth uh, for air abrasion with 50 micron aluminum oxide. And then I etch the teeth. This is all in enamel, okay? So it's enamel only. Protect the neighboring teeth with PTFE tape. So this is just thin PTFE tape, um, plumber's tape that has been sterilized in a uh, vacuum autoclave, okay? So you can cut a length of PTFE tape and then you put it into a little pouch and sterilize it 
uh, right through your sterilizer and you can just keep that in your drawer just like you do you, you know your sterilized bird blocks and things like that ready to go when you need it so first thing we're going to do is put some um co down so we're going to start to build the walls of our um build up okay so build the walls of our box now if you have a little look i haven't actually used a matrix because go back a slide we've got nice tight contact points okay and all i'm doing is building composite to those contact points and just making sure it's nice and smooth so i can do that with a flat with a micro flat plastic instrument i don't need to have a matrix on this i'm not widening the tooth uh, i'm not creating any overhangs or anything like that i'm literally just putting on the facial surface and just building out the facial surface so there's no need to place uh, any any matrix on here okay so first things first is we're going to use the co to build the proximals okay so this is very very thin because we're only building the teeth out a little bit and widening them a little bit so i'm going to get my overall shape by building the sides of my box with my co okay then i'm going to use my body shade to act almost like a dentine replacement okay we're not replacing dentine but we do want to create a little bit more opacity uh, in the cervical mid part of the tooth than we do on the incisal part. So that's where I'm gonna place my body shade, okay? So if you have a look on here, I've placed my body shade where I've, where I've covered in yellow, it's between the proximals, okay? Next, I'm gonna drop my halo in if I want to, which is a bit of body shade rolled up nice and thin. And then I'm gonna just put a very thin layer of the clear over the top of this area here, okay? And that just makes sure that that area there has a little bit more translucency and has that slightly lower value that we saw in the two central teeth, okay? And then finally, I'm gonna cover the whole thing with my final enamel shade, uh, which in this case was the GC Essentia LE, okay? So that's how we build up in four areas, just on the facial surface, just enamel only. Now it's time to shape and texture the tooth. Now, as we said, you can spend a long time doing this or you can get very, very efficient at just doing line angles and just getting the overall shape of the tooth right and you will still get a very, very good end result. And that's what we need to focus on, okay? Line angles and buccal contour are so important. The macroanatomy and the microanatomy, which is the secondary and tertiary dent uh, anatomy, it's much less important. And, and yes, if we want to elevate our own clinical skills uh, to be as best as we can be, then that's something we want to focus on. But once we get out of lockdown and we're just trying to generate income and do well by our patients and start to rebuild our practice and recuperate our lost earnings, it's something we don't really need to focus on for the time being. We can come back to that in the future. So let's talk about shape. These pictures it's the same tooth but by doing different line angles you create different shapes okay so by just manipulating the line angles we make the tooth look triangular we make it look oval but the actual underlying tooth is exactly the same okay so we need to assess the teeth around and find out what type of line angles do they have are they um are they oval teeth are they um square teeth are they triangular teeth and that's what we want to copy in to our uh, final restorations or are we trying to change our teeth? Does the patient have very triangular teeth, but they want square teeth, you know? So by adapting the line angles, we can change the way that the tooth looks, okay? And so that's what you can see here, uh, triangular and oval line angles. Now, what the line angle is, is the change from the facial surface of the tooth to the proximal surface, okay? So you've got your proximal surfaces, I'll come up about 45 degrees and then the facial surface. And that transition right on that join between the facial and the proximal, okay, is the line angle. And that's the area that the flash will pick up when you take a photo of the tooth. So if you're using dual uh, flashes that come and come from the sides rather than a ring flash, you use dual flashes that come from the sides, you'll get a flash mark on your photo at that transitional point from the proximal to the facial surface of the tooth, okay? And that is what dictates the line angle. That, or, sorry, that's what shows up the line angle. So the line angle is on the tooth, but you can see it when you take photography with your dual flashes. Another way of seeing it is taking a pencil and coming with the pencil at about 45 degrees 
to that transitional point and then just rubbing the pencil along the tooth and it will actually highlight that line angle okay so you can see the uh, the, the natural teeth line angles and then you can create false line angles and you can change the shape of the teeth by moving your line angles so you can make a tooth look narrower by bringing the line angles closer together so make that transition softer push the line angle towards the center of the tooth makes it look narrower you can make the tooth look wider by making that facial surface flatter and then having very, very uh, sharp line angles at the edges. So you push the line angles right to the edges and then a very, very short and sharp contour to the, to the proximals and that will make the tooth look wider. So you can play around with line angles to create the shape you want, okay? We've then got our macro texture, which is obviously uh, our vertical and our horizontal macro texture. Now that's the kind of soft, smooth curvature that you see on the front of central teeth and natural teeth. Um, and again, it's something that tends to look like people have just taken a burr and cut triangles out of the tooth. But it isn't a triangle. It's a nice, smooth, rolling contour. And that takes quite a lot of time. And you have to keep cycling through a burr sequence to get that contouring just right. And if you try and rush it, you'll end up with, with quite sharp uh, grooves in the tooth, which doesn't look nice. So that's why I'm saying for this time of our lives let's not particularly worry about the macro texture and, and then the micro textures the the pericomata and things like that again you, you don't necessarily need to worry about that right here and now uh, but it's something to aim towards and obviously we all want to develop and get better okay so let's just have a little look at this this single tooth so what i've done here is i've drawn on line angles because at the moment this tooth just covered in composite it's been roughly shaped but it doesn't actually have it doesn't look like a tooth yet so I'm drawing line angles onto it. And my rule of thumb is the mesial line angle of a tooth is closer to the definitive contact point of the tooth. So to the, to the most proximal point of the tooth, it's, it's about 0.5 of a millimeter away uh, and it's slightly straighter, okay? And the distal line angle is a little bit further away from the, the end point of the tooth. It's about a millimeter away from the end point of the tooth. Uh, and it's slightly more curved okay and you can see that on this screen so you've got a slightly more curved distal um, and then you've got a, a slightly straighter um, mesial and the mesial one's a little bit closer to the edge of the tooth okay you then want to use a soft flex disc and come at 45 degrees to the facial surface so if you look at again look at this tooth you can see that at the moment the facial surface is is flat all the way along and then you reach the side of the tooth and it's like 90 degrees like this, okay? So what we wanna do is we wanna soften that joint at 45 degrees like this, okay? And that's what creates the line angle. So I'm just gonna very gently with a soft flex disc and a slow speed hand piece, obviously, just soften the edges of the tooth and create that definitive transition between the facial and the proximal at 45 degrees. And that transitional point is the line angle, okay? If you come in too shallow and you soften it too much, you'll move the line angle too far across the center of the tooth. And that's the worst thing that can happen because then the tooth just looks like one big dome shape. We really do want a, a transition and it's nicer to see a flatter facial surface and then this nice transition to the, to the, to the proximal of the tooth with definitive line angles than it is to see an, a sort of over contoured, um, I, I call it a bird claw because it looks like a bit like a, a talon of a bird when it's a bit over contoured okay so now the line angles have been adjusted or the proximals have been adjusted you can see we've got these very definitive 45 degree chamfer all the way around and you can see where the powder from the composite has been left on the tooth with the soft flex disc and you can actually very clearly see you've got the facial surface and then a 45 degree chamfer all the way around to the proximal and that's where you can then highlight your line angle by taking your pencil and running your pencil along that transitional point and it will actually mark up the line angles like in this photo here okay and you can see where the line angles are exactly where i want them so i've got a slightly more curved distal slightly straighter mesial and then i've just divided the tooth into three so i've got my cervical third middle third and incisal third and this is where we use the buckle. Um, we divide the tooth into three to help us plan our buckle contour because the, the facial surface of the tooth, the buckle surface of the tooth has a slight curvature to it as well. So by dividing the tooth into three, it helps us 
navigate and create a roadmap to create that contour, okay? The cervical curve is quite sharp. Don't soften that cervical curve off too much, okay? So we want quite a nice sharp cervical curve and then it come up and flatten off a little bit. And we're gonna change our angle, work on our middle third, flatten that down, and then we're gonna work on our incisal third and flatten that down, okay? And that's the kind of shape we want, okay? So it's sharper cervically, and it flattens off to the middle, and it ever so slightly tapers off at the incisal. Don't taper it off too much, okay? Because then, again, you just lose that definition on the facial surface. You just end up, end up over contouring it, okay? So that's how to create the line angles, and it's just with a soft flex. You don't need to use anything more. Uh, you spend time doing it, use a pencil to keep on drawing in your roadmaps, okay? Keep on marking your line angles, drawing your, your, your thirds, and it just gives you something to work towards. And at that point, you really don't need to move on any further, and you could just do a high polish at that point, and the tooth will look awesome, okay? And there's plenty of dentists out there, very, very good dentists, who don't spend too much time on the, the secondary and tertiary anatomy. They get the line angles looking right, and everything just looks beautiful, okay? So you don't necessarily need to move on to these next stages. But if you do want to continue to shape and texture the tooth and, and work on your macro and microanatomy, you will need to use some more burrs, okay? Now, SmartFast, we've got a burr kit that we've designed. And it, again, it's reduced number, but it's got a certain number of burrs in it that work very well for creating these types of texture. Um, and so I'll just show you what those are now, if you're interested. So this is my favorite burr, which is the 832. This is a slow speed burr and it's a diamond burr and it will create, it will allow you to create um, some of the contour on the surface and it allows you to texture the surface as well. The Astropol um, by Ivoclar is very, very good at just softening contours. So once you've used your burr and you've gone in and you've created your shape, you can use the Astropol just to soften away any burr marks and just kind of keep that nice rounded flowing contour and you lose that um, kind of cutting look that you sometimes see okay the 832 is very similar to the 831 except it's a little rugby ball shaped one uh, and that's quite good just for creating um sort of little uh, little notches in the tooth and and if you've over contoured you can reduce it down a little bit with this one because uh, it's a little bit smaller head on it so that's a good one uh, and then uh, they were all slow speed so everything i've used thus far is slow speed so the astropole the 832 the 831 and the softlex that's all I'm using is a slow speed handpiece, okay, to um, to shape and texture my tooth. I don't want to take a high speed to it because of the slightest uh, mistake and that's it, you've completely ruined it. So stick to your slow speed and just got a lot more um, control over what's going on. And then the only time really I use a high speed is when I'm doing the palatal. So just removing any excess that might have flowed over the palatal of the tooth. Uh, and this is where I use the rugby ball shaped 8368. Uh, with a bit of water and that's a that's a that's a great burr i love that burr. okay so that's the, this is the case that i showed you a minute ago so i built up the layers and then i got my soft legs and i soft flex down the tooth and then i got um, some finishing strips and i went between the teeth with finishing strips just to sort of remove any little tags of composite um, at the proximals and there we have it okay so all that i've done is literally at this point shape the tooth with a soft flex um i've marked my line angles on so these are not my line angles drawn on, these are my line angles marked on. So I've used the pencil on the side and I've highlighted the actual line angles that I've created. So these are not my imaginary ones, these are the real ones. And then I step back and I have a look and I think, have I got symmetry? Yes, I have. Um, I'm gonna create a tiny notch at the mesial, okay? So where I've put the pencil mark, I just want a slight notch just to create a little bit of secondary anatomy. And so I'll use my 831 burr for that. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of texture across the surface. Now, have a look here. You can see that there, uh, you can see vertical marks on the tooth, okay? Because it hasn't had any polishing at this stage, okay? It's just had the um, texturing done onto it and it's had the soft flex onto it. So you can still see you've got some scratches going vertically on the tooth from the soft flex discs where they spiral round and then the horizontal texture is just horizontal texture that I've put on myself, but I haven't done any polishing yet, okay? So now I'm gonna use my simplified polishing technique, and that consists of a pre-polish, 
if you want to add pericomata, that's when you do it, and then you do a final polish with high luster, okay? And it's these two uh, that are the, the best polishes that I've come across. It's the Eve Diacomp Plus Twists. So you have a pink one and you have a white one, okay? The pink one is your pre-polisher. Um, that will remove any pericomata that you might have put on because it's so, so gentle and delicate. So you, you give it a pre-polish first, then you put on some pericomata if you want to, and then you give it a final polish with this one. And that's it. So it's literally those two polishes. So it's soft flex disc uh, for the line angles. If you do want to put any macro in, then you can use those birds we talked about earlier. If you don't, all you do is a pre-polish with the pink um, Eve Diacom Plus Twist, and then a final luster polish with the white one. And here we are. So this is the result after, I think this is after a week, uh, if memory serves. So that's a week. And you can see that we've got very, very natural teeth, very, very shiny. Uh, you really can't tell the difference between a natural tooth and a, uh, a fake tooth because the color blends in so well and the uh, GC Essentia LE has such a nice luster to it. So this is just a, a side on picture and you can see we've got a natural central tooth and then uh, with the shine on it and then a fake lateral tooth with the shine on it. And you can see how beautiful that shine is um, with the GC Essentia and that's what the eaves do. They, they create such a nice luster and it's very long lasting as well. So a very simple technique there. Okay, so I'll do case two. Um, this is, again, a case where somebody comes in, you know, they want smile improvements, not really sure what to do. We want fast, easy, predictable dentistry at this stage. So we don't want to get into anything too fussy. Um, this is a case that, that she was having ortho, uh, but wanted to get things all lined up after ortho, okay? So once the ortho was done, we had a wax up done. Uh, and this is what I say, it's so important to utilize our trial smiles because at this point we could have just taken the orthodontics off and the patient would have been quite happy with it and would have walked away and that would have been the end of it. But by taking the ortho off and doing a trial smile, we can show what we can achieve um, by making things more symmetrical and improving the incisal edge symmetry. So what we've actually got in this situation is upper right is a C that's been disguised as a canine tooth. The upper right lateral tooth is microdontic. The, I know, I apologize, the upper right lateral tooth is missing and the upper right what is in the position of the lateral tooth is actually a sit is actually a three then we've got the two centrals which are both ones and then we've got a rope we had a rotated um microdontic lateral on the left so, so we've actually got one canine tooth we want to disguise as a lateral tooth and on the other side we've got a microdontic lateral tooth and we want to kind of make it match the the contralateral side and then we've got this kind of differential wear pattern on the two central teeth we want to sort out, okay? So it's all additive dentistry, but we had a wax up done. We did a trial smile, the patient loved it, and then said, yep, I want to move forward with composite, okay? So the trial smile was very, very important to help her um, in, in, see exactly what was going to happen uh, and make sure that she was consented and it was the right treatment choice for her obviously you talk about ceramics and etc cetera, etc cetera, the longevity of composite and and this is what she wanted so this is what we went for so we had a platal um putty stent made and that allowed me to uh, just see where i needed to add to and where i didn't same technique as before so use the metal matrix strip to protect the teeth sandblast them etch them and now you've got a choice of matrices to use okay now there's three main matrices I use. So this is the um, Unica by Polydentia, which is a nice matrix because it does the mesial, the distal and the cervical curvature all in one go. Um, I do like it. I find sometimes though it can make the tooth look a little bit too oval in shape, a little bit too round, okay? So I actually tried this one first of all and I, I wasn't quite happy with the mesial curvature of it. So I used it for the cervical area and the distal then I changed and I added a bioclear onto the front of the tooth, onto the mesial port part, because I just wanted to use the bioclear to create the right curvature on the frontal portion. OK, so this is what I did. I created the kind of cervical and the side parts of the tooth first. Then I used the palatal shell, 
the sorry the platal putty index to create the platal shell and so i just used a very very thin bit of clear flow just to create that shell so i've now got the foundations to create my box okay so i still need to use my co on the proximals my body shade my translucent on the incisal and then a final enamel layer over the top okay so that's what i did so the co uh so first of all we've got the body shade going on and as you can see i'm using my body shade like i'm replacing dentine so i'm creating the dentine mammalons but it isn't a dentine composite because i'm working only in enamel and it's so thin if I use the dentine composite, it would be too opacious and it wouldn't look right. And you'd see it, you'd see it too much through the final enamel layer. So although I'm still creating the right and correct internal anatomy, I'm not using a dentine shade composite. I'm using a body shade composite, which isn't quite as opacious. OK, so I'm creating my little dentine mammalons with my A1 shade. Then I'm going to put my um, CO on the proximals. And then over that incisal part, I'm putting my clear, which is what you can see here. That's why it looks nice and smooth, because it's a clear flow. OK, and then the final layer is that LE over the top. OK, so I did the, the, the left, the right. I did alternate teeth and then the two central teeth. I literally, because it's just incisal edge and a little bit facial, all I used was the LE. OK, so you only use the shade for the area you're replacing. So if you're only replacing a little bit of incisal edge, you just need to use the enamel shade. If you're uh, just widening the tooth a little bit, you only need to use the proximal shade. If you're doing the whole tooth, then you need to use the proximal shade, the body shade in the middle, the incisal translucency, and the final facial shade over the top, okay? And then I did the line angles. And this is why I sang that the key is the line angles. So in this situation, I'm changing the shape of her teeth. So I drew my ideal line angles on. So I drew these on by hand to get the correct symmetry. And then I use my soft flex disc and just shape the teeth to uh, really define these line angles. Did a bit of texturing on the facial surface and that's it. So that's the final result. I think that's about three weeks later. So we can see we've got nice, smooth um, aesthetic, nice and natural. Can't really tell the difference between a natural tooth uh, and a, um, a false tooth. And then I took a photo with uh, cross polarized filters as well. And you can see that we've got almost um, the correct value and uh, shading and hue and chroma and everything. And as I say, this is all this is all composite. And the only part where you can really see the transition is on those two central teeth. Uh, and that's where we just place the LE. So you can actually see, especially on the left tooth, the natural incisal halo, and then the false incisal halo that the LE, because the LE is an opalescent uh, composite, so it creates its own incisal halo. So you can see that on there as well. But you can only see that under cross polarized pictures. We go back to the normal picture and it looks absolutely fine. So that's the, um, that's the technique, the four shade, for area technique um it really is all i use in 80 percent of cases probably more than 80 percent uh, if i'm not using that i'm using smile fast i'm doing single shade um so i'm either using an instant smile makeover technique like smile fast plug and play six teeth in one go um which takes an hour to an hour and a half or i'm doing it with you know, just on the lateral teeth or one central tooth and two lateral teeth or something like that. Uh, and I'm using the four shade technique because again, it's nice and quick and nice and efficient. Okay. So we've had tooth whitening and strategy number one, the mock-up of strategy number two, um, the simplifying your clinical dentistry is strategy number three and strategy number four is diversify. And this is the final part guys. So well done for sticking it out. Um, diversify. We need to think about where we're at and where we want to be okay and as i said earlier the the climate is going to change for all of us um for our patients for us for our team everybody um it's not going to be the same as where we were so what we were doing before cannot be the way we expect it to be after okay so we need to think about diversification and changing things up i think that there are courses out there that offer very, very high profit procedures that are very uh, low complexity. 
they're the type of courses that you want to be thinking about now. You want to be getting booked onto for when we get back to work. Okay. They're the ones where you can take what you learn and you can literally come back the next day and start doing it. Okay. It's it's all well and good thinking, oh, I'd, I'd like to be an implant dentist and I really enjoy surgery and I can see myself doing that. Brilliant. And I hope that that is where your path takes you. But that's not going to help you generate the income that you need right now to pay the bills and to cover our tax um, in January, um, you know, and and cover the loss of income we've had for, the, for potentially three months. So there are things out there what you can do that are um, higher profit, um, really beautiful dentistry at the end of it, but very low complexity. So they're the type of courses I think you should be thinking about. Um, I think it's so important to develop your photography because the nicer your photos are, the easier it is to communicate what you can do to your patients. You can show them your step-by-step -step pictures. And for example, a, a lot of you may know I post on Ripe a lot, and that encourages step-by-step -step protocol pictures. It's really, really useful because not only can you analyze your own work and see where you're making mistakes and see areas to improve, but also you can actually show patients step-by-step -step pictures. And so for the presentations I was talking about, um, you can put a presentation together with a step-by-step -step for a composite veneer case to show them what, what is necessary and, and what they're paying for and what they're getting, where their value for money is, okay? Um, you can also improve your online presence because if you've got nice photographs or even, they don't even have to be that nice, it's just smile photographs of patients before and after, so you can team that up with a testimonial and then you can put that online. And that's what's gonna generate a better buzz around your practice or if you're, if you're an individual um, around your own dentistry. Um, and it's gonna reassure patients that you're doing good work. Um, it's, you can market it. So it's really, really important, I think, to get good photography and to get better at photography and, and to use it, okay? Don't just keep it to yourself, you need to use it. Um, one of my mentors, Tony Gedge, always says delegate to elevate. And I think that's really important. And I have mentioned it quite a lot. Use your team, okay? The guys and girls we work with uh, are eager to improve, to, de uh, to develop their own skills, to diversify themselves, to have more ownership of uh, their job roles. So let's do it. Let's all sit down. Let's talk about where we can grow as an individual, where we can grow as a practice find out what people want to do uh, and, and see where it can go. And, and you never know what's going on until you start to talk to your team because they know so much more about our patients than we do. Uh, and they hear what's happening in the waiting rooms and they, they hear what's happening on the lunch breaks. The more we engage the team, the better uh, we can unify our practice and come up with common goals and drive forwards. And now's the time to do it. We're all sitting at home with nothing to do. So now's the time to start having um zoom consultations with your own team members and finding out what can we do what can we do so that when we come back to work we can we can improve and we can uh, say hit the ground running um and then explore new opportunities this is this is you know this time we'll probably never ever get again um we're all at home we're spending a lot of time with our families which is wonderful we're doing things that we probably have never done before, you know, online workouts and uh, and things like that. You know, this house party app, everybody's communicating and talking and playing quizzes with each other online. There's lots of things going on out there that people are doing. Um, and when we have nothing else to do, it gives us an opportunity to reflect on what we were doing and decide, are there thing, more things we can do? Are there, was there something missing before? And now's the time to l look to fill that void with something else. OK, uh, and I'll tell you something interesting. I've spoken to a, quite a lot of people and I, I know lots of people uh, from all walks of life. Um, you know, people of all different types of income and different job setups and family setups. And it was really surprising me. And it might not be the same for you guys where you're from. But for me, my patients were actually sorry, my friends are actually telling me that when this is over, they're going to have more money than they've ever had before. And I thought because, you know, we all live in our own little dental world. And I thought, how is this possible? You know, like I'm, I'm worried about going bankrupt. Um, how can you all be saying you're going to have loads of money? The people who are still working and working from home are still earning their full wage and are sitting at home. They're not going out to restaurants. They're not going on holiday. They're not going out shopping because they can't. So they are generating quite a lot of savings. And they've said when they finish, they're going to have more money than they've ever had. They've also been stuck at home for potentially three months 
when they come with you know getting roots in their hair uh you know <laughs> all these kind of things when they come out of this they're going to want to go to the hairdressers they're going to want to go shopping they're going to be have seen themselves every day in front of the mirror without makeup on because you know they, they don't need to people are going to want to improve themselves people are looking on the internet now the social media marketing statistics are showing that people are still looking at cosmetic procedures they're still looking for smile improvements just as much as they were before yet they're going to come out of this lockdown with more money than they had before so if we're there to show them that we can give them these things they want for their smiles i think we're actually going to find we get quite a high uptake um the people who are on furlough as well even though they're on 80 percent, a lot of them have still uh, said they can still afford their mortgages because they're not going on holiday just like just like the people who are getting full pay um, they're not buying um, they're not going out for nice meals and they're buying anything so they can still afford their mortgages but even though they can still afford their mortgages they have given themselves a three-month mortgage holiday so they're gonna have more money than they had before so the only people really who, who are gonna suffer I think are the, are the self-employed people uh, and obviously um, you know there's, there's there's a few other people and other different demographics of people but a lot of people will actually come out of this with uh money in their pocket and i think a want to do something different and special and all these feelings that we're feeling about ourselves and our careers and reflecting and all those kind of things everyone else is going to be doing as well um the statistics and the marketing people i've spoken to have all said the same people are still looking at these procedures. There is still gonna be a need for these procedures when we when we come out of lockdown. Um, so I think we need to prepare ourselves to be ready for them, okay? So the last thing is strategy number four, diversify. So let's, let's think about courses that are high profit and low complexity. Um, let's offer our patients something different from our competitors. Let's put ourselves out there. Let's show our patients who have got money in their pockets to spend. This is who we are. This is what we can do. We're doing something different come along to us and, and see how we can improve your smile and help your smile confidence, okay? Develop photography and online presence. Show the patients the beautiful smiles you can do. Demonstrate to them what you can do with your hands and how you can improve their smiles, okay? Uh, take photographs of the before, take them once you've done the mock-up on them and then create a presentation to show them step-by-step step how you can take them to where they want to get to, okay? It's that personal touch. It's going above and beyond what we're currently doing that's gonna make the difference in this new dental climate we're about to head into. Delegate to elevate, you know, I've said it before, engage the team. Now's the time to start doing things that you've not done before. You can't sit on your laurels, you have to do something different. TCO consultations are a really good way of uh, delegating some responsibility, uh, treatment coordinators. Um, we can do virtual consults, uh, we can do video consults so that the things coming into the practice, we can talk to our patients via video, we can give them ideas about what we can achieve with their smiles, and then we can follow that up with a presentation. And then we engage the team. The team can do the presentations for us, okay? If we spend this time doing, say, 10 PowerPoints that have all the different treatments that we offer on them uh, and an amalgamation of those, we can then let the team do the presentations and they can talk to the patients and explain about the different things and the different options, you know, and, and insert the patient pictures into the, the PowerPoint presentation. So use this time now to create uh, a portfolio of things ready to go, if not to utilize in the next weeks but to utilize in the next months and the next six months moving forward to strengthen your practice, okay? And if you're an associate, obviously talk to your principals, you know, have a chat with them about some of these ideas and seeing if, if there's anything that they wanna get involved in, they might let you take the lead on it and, and allow you to kind of move forward and help develop and market the practice. And then finally, it's exploring your opportunities. Um, I think this has been a gift, a gift of time with our families um and a gift of time to really see what's important to us and what i've noticed is there's been so many people doing different things teaching um, when they weren't teaching before doing charity work uh wonderful beautiful stories on the news about people doing all sorts of wonderful things delivering food parcels you know volunteering for the nhs so many things that people have stepped up and started doing and they've got huge fulfillment from that just because lockdown's gonna finish and we're gonna be go back to be dentists, don't stop 
doing those things, keep doing them, keep fulfilling yourself with other things that are outside of dentistry um, and record it. Do video diaries of when you are doing these things, put it on your on your website, put it on your personal social media pages, show our patients that we're more than white coats with masks, you know, terrified of, of aerosol and spreading COVID. We're doing more, okay, we're, we're real humans and we have real hearts. That's what people wanna see. They wanna know that there's somebody they can relate to behind that white coat. And I think that we've now got the opportunity to really dig deep into ourselves and find out what more we can give. And so we need to continue to carry that on, okay? So I hope uh, I've covered everything we set out to achieve during this webinar strategize and develop an action plan for expediating post-COVID income. So think about some of the things I suggested, the different strategies I suggested. Do they fit into your practice or don't they? Are there little bits that you can you can tweak and play around with and ideas that we've had? Um, we're going to develop a simplified sequence for anterior composite layering, four shades, four areas, okay? Keep it simple. If we can whiten everybody, get everybody to the same shade or, or within, a, within a ballpark of shades, we can keep our composite uh, numbers down we can start repeating the process over and over and over again every patient becomes the same patient the same technique the same shades we will get better and better and better more efficient more efficient our results will get better uh, and then finally you know we don't want to be dilly dallying with half an hour 45 minutes on shaping and polishing because it's time wasted at this particular point in our lives so let's simplify it down focus on line angles a two-stage polishing technique, and then we're done. And we can develop those other skills at a later date. But if we get the core skills spot on, everything else will get easier from that point, okay? So where to learn more? Now, I, I did say this right at the beginning. This is a, a snippet of composite, and you can't just put composite on every tooth and expect it to work. We need to look into the mouth as a whole and diagnose everything properly um now we i teach this myself uh smile fast um we teach this kind of thing uh, and then also restoring excellence academy uh, which i'm very fortunate to work with there's a huge online resource 130 hours worth of online resources on the restoring excellence academy occlusion soft tissue implants perio um prosthetics, you name it, it's on there, okay? Um, they are launching an online um, subscription service, which is $29 a month, you know? So it really is one of the cheapest ways of accessing that amount of quality content. So if you do want to learn more about dentistry uh, and want to fill some of your time over these next few weeks, I would, I would strongly recommend the um, Restoring Excellence Academy. Um, so I've put the web the links on here and I'll leave this slide up if you need to write it down. Uh, you can email me personally if you want any clarification or anything I say or just to find out a little bit more about the courses, thomas at smilefast.com. Um, and obviously our Smilefast course, which is the front six teeth uh, with a pre-separated stent using Empress Direct Paste Composite. Um, that's something we'll be running uh, once we put some dates together and we all know we're going to go back to work again, probably August, I would have thought. Um, info at smilefast.com or you can check out the website www.smilefast.com and then uh, Ripe, um, you know, Lincoln Harris is the is the sort of uh, the, the main man behind it, but there's some big, big names on there and, you know, some of the content is ridiculously good and for, for, for $29 a month, that's that's excellent. So you can uh, you can log on and to that, that's Ripe Global um, and uh, just put the code SMILEFAST in so they know how you heard about it. Um, but that's it, you know, there's there's so much we can do with this time. I hope that I've given you some ideas. I hope that you'll you'll come away from this, you know, with some clinical ideas and some also kind of like more overarching planning ideas. Um, I am going to be at the IDDA um, conference on the 24th of October at the Gherkin in London. Uh, super looking forward to that. I'm going to be talking with uh, Midi Ojo, my partner at Smilefast, uh, for about an hour and 90 minutes on the smart fast pathway so uh, if you are interested in finding out a little bit more and you know we've got a, a big waiting list for the courses so if you don't manage to get on a course before then it'd be nice to see you guys on the 24th of october uh, otherwise that's me done i wish you all the very very best um and i think if there are any questions i will come out of my presentation and i'll take those now um or i might 
make a list of them and then just send a, a recording of those or something like that. But um, no, it's been a pleasure, guys. Thank, thank you for your time.